you've been there since the beginning, since we've been, been dealing with this, talking about these, you know, SXOS, even before the pro. Okay, we were there. Did you see this? Because you yourself, sir, as I must give you credit, you foreseen a lot of these events. And a lot of people might not have seen it. So I'm putting it on this episode right now. For those who do not know, this man predicted so many different events. And people were like, oh, dead specimen. You might, you're hating a little. We feel a little hate. But it came true. At the beginning of everything, when SXOS first release at that point did you see any of this happening um so my thing at the very beginning was all i saw was oh you have this for homebrew and if you want to do this very specific method of game back uploading slash piracy you pay for the software that's basically atmosphere with this cool loader and this cool interface and whatever i thought one of two things were going to happen either number one it was going to flop like that was my first thought was okay is this just going to fail like are they just going to go bankrupt because no one's going to buy it or number two is the atmosphere team somehow going to find a way to sue them um i didn't know the full scale of what exactly was going on at the time i don't think anybody did um, minus the people, you know, actually the re-switch atmosphere team, but I didn't know the full extent of what was going on. And so I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, maybe there's a chance that they'll figure out who the hell's doing this and they'll sue them or Nintendo will, um, just ban people so prolifically or do some crazy shit that it'll just make using it not economical or God forbid everyone was wrong about the whole this exploit's unpatchable thing and they patched the exploit and then people feel like they got scammed by team executor because how they were selling this with the prospects of it being unpatchable being able to be used forever and then it wasn't yeah. i never expected the man to get down the, the, the people behind it to get effectively doxxed by the u.s government and then federally indicted on fucking trafficking charges that I didn't foresee. I may have foreseen it um, around when um, Tom got sued for running Uber chips because essentially, because look, I was really fucking suspicious that Tom owned that because I am a little snoop and definitely was looking around kind of on you know like i'm like okay i'm on their discord oh there's this guy game over does he have a twitter i look look i'm like oh wow this guy has a twitter oh he has a website game over dot tech i don't know if that's still up anymore and i went to it and i'm like oh okay it's this website there's nothing really going on and um there is also um you know obviously the team executor website itself and i noticed i noticed this hey uber chips look a lot like both of those websites and then, oh, and this is this is actually really where the Twitter account came in. That it was you know game over Tom. Oh, so this Uber chip site looks a lot like the SR, the Team Executor website. And oh, this Uber chip is run by a guy named Tom. Oh, and this also has a guy has a license plate that says game over. Mm. So I had connected those dots a long time ago, but obviously I can't say anything because I'll just sound like a conspiracy theorist. Except, oh wait, I was right. So, yeah, he gets indicted, or he gets sued, and I'm like, oh, fuck. If these guys are smart, now if they're doing this, this really puts them into the, okay, they know what they're doing, this is black hat territory. You know, they, they, they make themselves out to be white hats. Most people look at them as gray. If you know anything about, like, hacker hats, then this will make sense to you, obviously. Um, the, most people see them as gray hats. But if they're doing it in the way I'm about to describe, this makes them out to be black hats. If they were smart everything's on a need to know basis. And I think that's kind of how it works. But if they were smart, that's how they would do it. And Tom knows nothing other than I'm just an admin for their website and they like me. And I think that might've been the case, but there was also an inkling of suspicion in my mind that they're going to make him talk. They're going to say, we're suing you for a billion dollars, but if you give us some info, we'll drop it to 1 million. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I'm, you know, I, that's kind of when it clicked. I'm like, oh, wow, they're really about to bring him down. And it, what really confused me, and this is something that I still can't wrap my head around, is was there any correlation between the whole 
slew of takedowns they did, and um, the S. Fuck you, Joshua. <laughs> the the SX core getting released and the slew of takedowns because they seem correlated, but why would they be correlated? Because the SX Pro and SXOS itself had already done theoretically so much damage to Nintendo and their brand and why did it take until the mod chips now the only thing I could think of is that Nintendo sort of realized like well fuck okay we can't prevent this it will take a full it'll either take us paying Nvidia millions of dollars we don't want to spend or it'll take us getting out that new switch revision earlier in order to stop this mod chip we can't stop it we just have to start going at them. At least they knew with the original exploit, they could just put some boot ROM patches on from then on, and they'd be all good. No worries after that. And that probably wasn't cheap, but it probably didn't cost millions of dollars to, especially because, I mean, the exploit was public, so they could easily look up an open source exploit, and then it probably took them, you know, it took NVIDIA probably hours to patch it, and then just start flashing that to your chips instead of the old one so when you start getting into hardware exploits that are basically saying we're not exploiting the security we're bypassing the security by just basically making it impossible for it to run in the first place yeah you kind of have to just say okay fuck it we can't stop we can't stop the users from using the chips anymore. So now we just have to stop them from getting the chips in the first place. And obviously they failed at that anyways. Cause yeah, you've taken team executor down, but at this point you can buy any amount of clones and they, at this point they're perfected. I'm, I'm just going to say that straight up. Yeah. You can't run SXOS. Okay. It's mid 2022. No one gives a shit anymore. Everyone's running atmosphere. Everyone's content with atmosphere. There's so many plugins and shit that you can use that only work on atmosphere. And no one cares anymore. And so no one cares about that being gone. You have really good OLED specific chips. Now you have damn near perfect SX core and SX light clones. Yes. They're expensive as shit, but that's basically it. They're costly. I haven't heard of them destroying consoles anymore, and I haven't heard of them being defective anymore. I, th- I, I and now Nintendo's just lost. If you know where to look, you can get them. Rant over. Now, one thing I want to ask you specifically, I don't know if you heard about it, but a new Switch revision. Um, a lot of people talked about when the original OLED Switch came out, was it the one? Everyone was thinking, was this going to be the one where they were going to patch it? There has been word now that there's going to be another Switch revision. And the goal is that this one will not work with the chip and it will not be vulnerable. Have you heard anything about that? I have not. But if that is the case, I don't think that's the goal. I think that's a side effect because... Honestly, it would be a waste of Nintendo's time to make a new revision to kill the chips. It'd be in their best effort to, or in their best interest to make a new revision that's more powerful. Make that Switch Pro, and oh, we also switched to a new chip that just it just doesn't work. Now, my thing though is that I feel like they'd either need to a switch architectures, b switch suppliers, or C, get a completely 100% custom-made chip by NVIDIA in order to um, not have this new revision hacked. Because I'm betting what they're going to do is they're going to do some really stupid, small change to the chip that's, yes, if I took my cur- if I had an SX core, took my current SX core and just threw it into the switch and tried to do it and it wouldn't work, but then someone's going to find out that, oh, actually, if you take a wire and you bridge it to this other capacitor, it actually achieves the exact same thing. I'm betting that that's what's going to happen. Some chi- either some Chinese company or some, like I don't know, aesthetics or something, just some YouTuber is going to fuck around with it and figure out how to get the chip working again. Now, maybe Nintendo is so headstrong on this that they are either A, going to just make a revision to stop it, or B... Uh, make a switch pro have it be different and actually have a seriously good uh implementation that stops the chip well okay great now the question is why the hell did it take you two years to do this these chips have been out since mid 2020 why did it take you 
two and a half, you know, two years, two and a half years to actually implement this at this point. What the fuck's the point? You could buy any, any switch that is currently on the market or basically any switch that is on the third. Like, okay, let's say, let's say that it's a year from now and every switch on the market is now patched to this. Well, you have about a hundred million switches out in the wild right now. So you're not stopping anyone from buying a secondhand switch and hacking it. Okay. When you did it with the first set of switches, there were a lot of them out there, but I think what only like 30 some million, which is a lot, but I mean, that's only barely, that's a little over double of what the Wii U sold. So that's actually not much in practice. So you have it so flooded with, and, and the fact that the, the, the purely patched switches were so stealthily patched, it's very difficult to pinpoint. So that one, Nintendo got lucky that it came out so early. This market wasn't flooded. It's flooded now. And it's just going to be a waste of their time, money, effort, fill in the blank to, to, to do it. And when they could just naturally upgrade the chip and either A, it just has upgraded security or B, is so architecturally different that it wouldn't work in the first place. So I would hope to God, well, I don't know. I mean, it'd be kind of fucking hilarious because, I mean, I, I'm acting like I'm against the chips. Like, like I've somehow like changed my view on modding. Like, no, I haven't. But... I'm also just trying to look at this from a realist perspective and it just seems unrealistic that they would do this for the sole purpose of blocking the chips. It would have to be a new upgraded revision. And if they did, it's going to be half baked. If it's not, what's the point there? There's my TLDR that took me way too long. to explain. <laughs> hey, you nice. Now, I know you got to go. Do you got time for one more question, Dan? You got time? I, I got, I got, like, I don't know. I could go for another half hour if you needed me to. Uh, so let's do that. I'm gonna ask you one question because I do. I know there's others too. I'm gonna get on, and I got my own piece to say. Um, but I'm asking this. <laughs> Yo, Kyle's actually here. Fuck yeah. Yeah, my man Kyle. So let me ask this, Dad. Do you think what happened to Gary Bowser overall, morally? And by law, do you think it's morally right? And do you think by law it was right that Gary Bowser was sentenced to 40 months in the federal penitentiary? What do you think? Morally, no, I'll do that second. By law, only about 50%. Because from what I've been told by a lot of people, they completely fucked the extradition. Like, completely fucked it. And they he shouldn't have been extradited the way he was because... Uh, from what I can tell, the, basically the basis that they extradited him was that he had a Canadian citizenship. And what I wouldn't have been shocked of was if they literally just like called up some dude in Canada and was like, hey, can we extradite this guy under your citizenship? And they just they just go, yes, because it's Canada. I mean, we're, we're Canada might as well be a U.S. state. I so I, I, I the way I'm getting it is that they basically probably extradited him under the guise of his. Canadian citizenship, but oh shit, he's in the Dominican, which yes, he has residency in, but he's in the Dominican right now. And we're just going to extradite him anyways. And there was like a 24 hour wait, wait period that should have went on. And I think he was allowed to have like, con like had, you know, his one phone call and, and all that shit, but he didn't get it. Apparently they extradited him in less than 24 hours. And I don't know what law that breaks, but I think that I, I honestly should have looked into this a long time ago, but they fucked that up. So, did he break international law? Yes. Did the U.S. government also break international law trying to extradite him? Yes. And, sh and you know, I, I guess it works out. Then Now, granted, the way that this works is that if the U.S. government breaks a law trying to prosecute you, the government gets told to shove it, and you get off on your charges. I, I believe is how this works. But, I mean, Gary got the medium end of the stick in that he wasn't sentenced to what he could have fully been sentenced to. So, eh, it's it's really 50-50. Yes, he broke copyright law. He should he should have to serve for the copyright law he broke. And yeah, I'm a representative of Codex. I'm also aware of what the laws are. And yeah, he broke fucking laws. Like, do I think they're just laws? Fuck no, and they're not just laws. You should be allowed to put whatever the fuck you want in your own hardware, even if it's for illicit purposes. The ZSX cores never came with any any pirated software on them. 
SXOS, yeah, that's a bit of a different story. Sue them for SXOS. Like, Say you put on copyrighted keys in your SXOS. But I don't believe the cores or the SX Pros ever came with copyrighted content, but they're calling those circumvention devices. And that's what a lot of his charges were, were the circumvention devices. No, that's a, that's a stupid law. The DMCA is a complete outdated piece of garbage, and we should have fucking repealed the whole damn thing a long time ago and completely updated it. Fuck amending it. Get rid of it entirely. There's my fucking two cents for the day. No. Now, morally... Well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, I just said it. No, I don't think, I, I, I think that he's an idiot because I, I don't, I think he did, he did public relations, which means I bet he was public relations for the resellers and why he didn't take steps to completely disavow these sellers that were pushing cards with games on it is beyond me. Why he had wording on the website that said play all games, which yes, that's ambiguous, but clearly could be uh, what's the word? Interpreted as, oh, play all the games and download all the games and put them on your SD card. Why he allowed um, Stargate NX to exist and why he didn't you know disavow and say, don't use this, we don't support this. And I still somewhat believe that he might have had a part in that. But again, they never indicted him on it. So I'm not going to say that for sure. Um, why he didn't take serious steps to, you know, yes, it is a product that can unlock the ability to commit piracy. Everyone knew that. And maybe that's what they wanted. But they also didn't need to do anything in their advertising to make that a point. Everyone knew you could do that, no matter how you shook it. Even if you had not, not a clue how jailbreaking or modding consoles worked. If you, you looked on the internet and saw this thing, you would know that you could download a game file, put it on your SD card, use this little USB dongle, and you'd be able to play that game that you downloaded from the internet. There is no reason that anything connected to team executor themselves should have advertised this or supported it. And I think Gary failed miserably on not making a point of that because if he didn't, then I would say that his arrest and extradition was completely 100% morally inappropriate by the U S government and by other governing bodies that allowed this to happen. The 10% comes from the fact that he didn't do a good enough job at disavowing the piracy. And even if it was just a front, who the fuck cares? It's a front. It's covering their ass. Good for them. And hell, maybe that's what the ReSwitch team is doing. Maybe the ReSwitch team is doing the exact same thing where all of their anti-piracy shit, maybe they don't give a fuck about piracy. Maybe they're hardcore pirates themselves. All I know is that they're covering their ass by saying they don't support it and putting in half-hearted measures to block it. You know, they don't include the... the um, what do you call it? They don't include the um, fucking, what are they called? Signature patches. But they also make no effort to block you from putting your own signature patches, which, yes, they say, oh, that goes against our moral code of freedom. Maybe it does, but also maybe you just don't care about piracy, but you have to do it to cover your ass. Gary didn't do that. Team Executor didn't do that. And that's where I kind of am like, okay, I wish I, I wish deep down that you weren't arrested and that team executor could still live on. But you kind of caused this yourself? Mm. Mm. Dead specimen. Man, you dropped so much knowledge. Uh, the knowledge is incredible, man. I got to say, um, that's kind of how I feel to... Um, you know, so I probably pissed a lot of people off with that take, but whatever. You well, know what I want to say that take is honest and rightfully so. You know, a lot of people, if you do the crime, you do the time, and you know what laws are, laws are in place to be broken. Okay, so if you break it, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna face the consequence for that law. And I, I'm with you on that. You know, regardless of what the charge may be, may be overblown. I'm right with you. Now, dead specimen. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to bring some others in because I'm going to, you know, if you're there, I'm going to bring you back in. Because I know yeah, I my boy Kyle in here. Yeah. And I'm going to definitely bring Kyle in because I like asking the young minds. You guys are in tune. So, my man, I'm going to bring you back on, dead specimen. In one second, I'm going to get Kyle in, give Kyle his time, and then I'll bring you back in. 